Support Name Explain on Patreon for ad-free videos, exclusive podcasts and blog posts, and to help choose what names get explained. Click the link in the description. Aren't dogs amazing? Not only do these incredible, highly intelligent, loving creatures actually exist on our planet, but over many years of domestication, they're able to live with us. And I don't mean live with us in the same way you can keep a horse in a stable or a tortoise in a box, but we share our homes with them. They get to sit in the same room as us, or go on adventures with us, or even get to share a bed with us. Well, depending on your thoughts on the matter anyway. And because of the relationship we build up with dogs in our lives, we don't simply just call them dog. That would make things rather confusing. Using. We of course give them names, and the name of a dog holds a bit more weight to it than the name you'll give to some other pets like a snake or a fish, as over time a dog will actually come to be aware of their name and respond to it in the same way we do. It's a very impressive trait in an animal, that's for sure. The naming of dogs however doesn't seem to be as stringently regulated as the naming of humans. While many people give their dogs the same kind of names we give to humans, this doesn't always have to be the case. Some people get very creative with the naming of dogs. A list of 10 weird dog names I found include the likes of Peanut Wigglebutt, Otto Von Longdog, Angus T. Brackencrack, and Waffle Dot, just to name a few. Though I don't know if these names belong to actual dogs or if they've just been invented, but you get the point. Though between the human names we give dogs and some of the more silly, ridiculous ones, we have the popular, stereotypical dog names. These are the pre-established names that while would seem odd if given to a human, as a name for dogs, no one bats an eyelid to them. These classic dog names include the likes of Rex, Rover and Spot. There are reasons as to why these names are so linked with dogs. Rex comes from Latin and means king, so it's a pretty darn fitting title to give to a trusted companion dog, and it's a word we've established with animals too, like with the Tyrannosaurus Rex, which means Tyrant Lizard King. As for Rover, this is a name for dogs that comes from a time when we use dogs more often as working companions for hunting and such. Rover is the noun for the verb rove, meaning to wander around. So dogs that would have been used in hunting as scouting dogs would have roved around too looking for game. They were literal rovers, so this name was applied to them. And as for Spot, well this is the name of a dog in the popular Dick and Jane books of the 20th century, which were written to help children learn to read. As these books became popular, more kids would have been exposed to Spot the dog, and in turn wish for their own spot dog themselves. Later on there was another series of books with a dog called Spot in them, which I'm sure helped propel the name into dog stardom too. And while these names come from fairly obvious origins, there's one other popular dog name that comes from more unique origins, that being the name of Fido. Well to get to the root of it all, Fido comes from the same root many other words come from. Fido is a Latin word and is seen as meaning things along the lines of trustful slash faithful and to believe in slash confide in. All different words but they have the same theme of meaning to be relentlessly loyal, and loyalty and faithfulness is a feature that so many of us love in our dogs, so it only makes sense as to why this word would make it fitting for a dog's name. But Fido really could have been a one and done deal, just another strange name for dogs, however it has been elevated to the likes of Rex and Rover to become a stereotypical dog name. How did that happen? This name was popularised not because of a work of fiction like we see with Spot, or due to working dog reasons like we see with Rover. We have one specific dog named Fido to thank for the popularity of the name across all canine kind. And this Fido was the dog belonging to someone in quite the position of power, that being a former president of the United States of America. Presidential pets are seemingly a whole thing like Wikipedia has a list of every pet owned by a US president. And while there are more common pets like dogs and cats and even horses, some were a bit more unique. Calvin Coolidge had a pet raccoon named Rebecca who a treehouse was built for. And once Coolidge had moved out and Herbert Hoover moved in, a wild possum named Billy moved into Rebecca's treehouse. Martin Van Buren briefly and two tiger cubs gifted from a man before donating them to a zoo. And of course Theodore Roosevelt was a lover of nature and owned animals such as a lizard named Bill, a badger called Josh, a black bear named Jonathan Edwards, and even a hyena also named Bill. Anyway, I'm getting sucked into the rabbit hole of presidential pets. Fido didn't belong to any old US president however, he belonged to perhaps the most well known president in the history of the United States. I'm of course talking about Abraham Lincoln. I'm sure you have a pretty good idea as to who exactly Abraham Lincoln was, but just for the briefest of overviews of the man, he was the 16th president of the United States, ruled over the nation during the American Civil War, brought about the emancipation of slaves in the nation, and was famously assassinated while at the theatre. So it's easy to understand why he is regarded as one of the most important presidents in the United States history. And while we all know about his presidency, emancipation of the slaves, 
death and vampire hunting days, a part of his life that isn't anywhere near as talked about is of course his dog named Fido. We have few photos of Fido left, however as we do have photos of him, this establishes him as the first ever presidential pet to have been photographed. As we can see from the photo, Fido was a mixed breed yellow Labrador. At the time he was around in the mid 19th century, pet dogs weren't too common and could only really be afforded by the more wealthy, however stray dogs were plentiful. While we don't know how exactly Lincoln and Fido came together, what we do know is that they would have been together by at least 1855, as we have evidence that Lincoln purchased D. Wormer from a store in the town of Springfield, Illinois, where he was living at the time. The two were seemingly inseparable and could be seen together all around the town in Lincoln's law office and while he ran errands around the town. Fido would have been known to the people of Springfield just as much as Abe himself was. At home, Fido played often around with Abe's two children of Willie and Tad and was somewhat spoiled, often getting scraps from the dinner table, much to Mary Todd's annoyance. What's interesting to note is here that while we don't know why exactly Lincoln chose the name Fido, other than it was already somewhat established as a dog name, what we do know is that this wasn't the popular dog name it is now at this time. Supposedly the trendy dog name of the time was Carlo, which was popular among the better red people as was the name of the faithful dog in Jane Eyre. So what we can see here is that Lincoln didn't stick to the dog naming trend of the time. Perhaps if he did, Carlo would be a name we link with dogs still to this day. Of course Lincoln's life would change forever when he was elected for presidency. During his campaign, Abe would have been up day and night meeting with all kinds of campaign managers, all most likely done with loyal and faithful Fido at his side. When it was revealed that he had won the election, the town of Springfield erupted into celebration. Abe was such a local in the town that all the residents were happy for him. Fireworks were set off and cheering could be heard down the street. And while Abe was quite ecstatic, like any other dog, all this noise and fireworks led Fido to hide under the bed. When it came to moving into the White House, Abe faced the challenge, what to do with Fido. He was a small town dog and Abe didn't think he would be happy in the city with all its hustle and bustle. It was a tough decision but Lincoln decided it would be best if Fido stayed in Springfield. Fido stayed with a man named John Roll and his family. John was one of Abe's oldest friends so he knew that his beloved dog would be in safe hands. Fido would have already known him too as John had kids around the same age as Abe's so Fido would have played with these children often. Unfortunately with the ongoing war and the challenge of travelling in the 19th century, Abe never actually got the chance to visit Fido again before his assassination. When the news of his death hit the town of Springfield, many mourners went to the Lincoln family home to pay their respects. Some of those mourning included the royal family and Fido, who went to the house to pay respect to their deceased friend and Fido's master. Fido lived for around a year after the death of Lincoln, and in some sort of sad symmetry, Fido met his end in a similar way to Lincoln. He too was murdered. The story goes that one night in the town of Springfield, a drunk was sitting on the curb downtown. Excited, Fido jumped up to say hello to this man, yet in a drunken anger the man wielded a knife onto the poor dog. When the Roll family realised that Fido hadn't returned home, they went out looking for him though it was sadly too late. Fido had become such a familiar face around the town that his death too upset the residents. However, Fido had found fame across the states as their president's loyal dog, so this death was more nationwide too. It's from this beloved dog of this beloved president as to how the name Fido became the popular catch-all dog name that is known as to this day. However, Lincoln's Fido isn't the only popular Fido dog from the history books. And if you thought that story was sad, then oh boy, get ready for this one. This Fido lived in Italy during the Second World War. His owner worked at a factory and took a bus to work and every evening after work, this loyal Fido would be there waiting at the bus stop for his owner to return. One day, however, the factory Fido's owner worked at was bombed due to the war, meaning he didn't return home. Fido, however, still went to the bus stop, despite his owner never coming back. The story goes that for the next 14 years, every day Fido would go to that bus stop and wait for his owner to return. We know the name Fido means to be faithful, and this Fido really lived up to that name. There are arguments over which Fido popularised the Fido name. However, I can't help but feel that it was Lincoln's Fido that did it. He was around way before the Italian Fido, with evidence of the name picking up popularity in newspapers and such after the president's death. Though regardless, this name is just as synonymous with dog kind 
just as much as the likes of Spot and Rover, but these origins of the name's popularity are from a long time ago. How exactly does Fido fare now in the canine naming world? Well, while it is still heavily linked with dogs, you don't actually hear of many dogs actually being called Fido these days. It's actually become so linked with dogs that many see it as being too stereotypical and even generic, so people don't actually use it as their dog's name. The name is more often used as a placeholder name we use in language when we want to talk about dogs without having to mention an actual dog. Kind of like the Joe Blogs of the dog world if that makes any sense. Dog naming trends have really changed over the years. As mentioned at the start of this video, more people are giving their dogs more human sounding names like Alfie, Bella, Max and Charlie, as opposed to more traditional dog exclusive names. There's many thoughts as to why dogs are getting more human names more often. One idea being that as we use dogs for work less and less in society, we are starting to see them less as tools for our benefit and we don't even see them as just an animal companion anymore. Many people see their dog as a member of their family, so instead of giving them a less personable name like Rex or Fido that brands them as just a dog, we are giving them more human names that fit in with the rest of the family that they are firmly a part of. Honestly, it's a topic that could be covered in a whole video. But for now anyway, we have a deeper understanding as to how one US president and his faithful companion helped cement Fido as the perfect dog name. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Patreon is vital to Name Explain, and donating just $2 a month allows you to enjoy ad free videos and bonus patron exclusive content. It also allows you to help choose what names get explained in upcoming videos, and it gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you so much for all the support you guys give Name Explain. Hello all and thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. You can find me on Twitter, I'm at NameExplainYT. On Instagram, I'm also NameExplainYT. And on Facebook, just search Name Explain. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.